What's going on guys? So on Tuesday, July 22nd, Apple released iOS 26 Beta 4 as well as iPadOS 26 Beta 4, WatchOS 26 Beta 4, TVOS 26 Beta 4, macOS Tahoe 26 Beta 4, as well as VisionOS 26 Beta 4. macOS Tahoe 26 Beta 4 was actually released a few minutes after the other software was. Interesting enough, it's actually released accidentally on Monday, so only a few people were able to install it, and then it was hold shortly after that. Now downloading it for me was about 1.8 gigabytes on my iPhone SE second generation, which is actually pretty small. And some people online were saying that on newer devices, it was around double, maybe three or a little more than three gigabytes, which is still quite small, which is the way it should be going beta to beta. There's just a few changes here and there. So it took about five minutes to download, which is not long at all, and only about 15 minutes to prepare to install. Again, on my iPhone SE second generation, this is my secondary phone I'm using the beta test. Let's hop into more details here. We'll see the build number. It says iOS 26.0, and then there's the build number 23A5297i. So there's an I at the end of the build number. Closer it is to A is the closer it is to final release. So since it's still pretty far from A, we still have quite a few betas left in this development cycle, which is about correct since usually the final release comes out in around mid-September. So we still have at least a month month and a half until we get that final release. And that includes betas either every two weeks or every week. Now let's jump into some of the new features in iOS 26 beta 4. And the first is another new wallpaper option. We actually got four wallpaper, new wallpaper options in last beta. Now this time we're gonna see we have a fifth. The four on the right are our original, the, you know, the shadow, the sky, the halo, and then dusk. But if you scroll all the way over to the left, there's a new one and it's a dynamic option. It actually dynamically switches between the four options and actually not just the plain four options, but it will actually switch between the light and dark mode counterparts of this. You can actually see if I try to change it from dark to light mode, you can see it doesn't do anything. You can see, it, you know, regular dynamic switching. It doesn't actually change, you know, to be all dark or all light. It still switches between dark and light. So you can see I have a set to dark right now. And then you can see right now it's showing a dark option and then the showing the dark sky option again, but you can see now it's showing a light option. The, I think that's the, I believe the light halo option and now showing the light sky option. This is a pretty cool wallpaper in my opinion. I really like it because I like all four options, both in light and dark. So this is really nice. I do like that they added a dynamic wallpaper option, just like they did with iOS 18 and last year with that wallpaper. Also iOS 26 beta 4 adds 12 new CarPlay wallpapers. So there's a lot of changes to wallpapers this time around. We have a new blue one. We also have a new brown option. There's a gray option green, purple, and red. And then they all come in both light and dark mode, making for 12 new options total. They all follow the liquid glass design. They look similar to the iOS 26 wallpaper on the iPhone, especially the blue one. It reminds me of the sky option for the iOS 26 built-in wallpaper. They're just themed after colors instead of like dusk or halo. They're like brown, gray, green, purple, red. But these are really nice options. I kind of wish we had these on the iPhone as well. Of course, you may even be able to download these from the internet and use them on your Mac or an iPad. They are in landscape format, so can't really use them on your iPhone unless you rotate it. Or it's possible that Apple will bring these to the iPhone, iPad, or Mac in a later beta, but we'll just have to see. These may be exclusive to CarPlay. Finally, after a very long two weeks of beta testing, Liquid Glass is in fact back in beta four. And you can see it here when I scroll through the music app, you can see it's definitely a lot more translucent than it was before, a lot less frosted light than it was in beta 3. This looks a lot better, looks a lot more like liquid glass to me. I still wish, you know, there was a customization option like a slider where you can choose the extent to the effects of liquid glass, but that isn't here at least yet. I do wish they'd add this so that everyone's happy with it. I'll show it in dark mode too, and in a little bit I'll show you a few different apps.
Here's another example, this is the Files app, and you can see, especially when the bottom tab bar approaches a color, like a blue folder, it doesn't even have to be blue, it could be like this red folder too, you can see, especially when it starts to scroll off it, like right there, we'll show it in light mode as well, see there it is in light mode, it doesn't look as clear in light mode, it still looks more frosted, you can see it through there, it just doesn't seem as like snappy as dark mode, you can, you can kind of see it there, just you can't see it as well as in dark mode, we'll at another app too let's say photos you can kind of see it in here for example in the photos app you can see it like at the top of the three dots button the select button up there even the back button as i scroll up past the top you can kind of see it flow out as i scroll past that image there you can see a little bit there too as i scroll between images you can uh, with the buttons at the top the navigation buttons you can see it there still not as clear we'll try dark mode there's dark mode you can see can't see it as much you can't see it does change color though just to kind of flow with the images that those buttons are overlaying at the moment so you can see it there switching as well here's another great example of this menu in the photos app for example and it, this of course changes because you, you're not going to have the same screenshots as i do but you can see as i scroll through especially these buttons at the bottom the navigation buttons the filter the search the show summary button that text there you can see especially when it flows over something colorful or have a different color and you can see that transition as well it just looks really nice so it looks similar to beta 2 not exactly like beta 2 though but similar i'll turn the brightness down it's a bit bright and then i'll go into dark mode as well light mode perhaps it's actually similar since it's screenshots so there's not gonna be much of a difference there except that the buttons here will be light you can see there actually is a readability issue there i mean you can barely read that you know, at least until you scroll over something darker but it's not perfect i still think it's easier to read in dark mode that's why i've been switching between them during this video just so you can see both ways because i know with this liquid glass dark mode is a lot more readable there's that photo again i'm over yeah you can see it a lot more easily here's the tv app where i can show you another example you can kind of see it there you can mostly see it again when you're transitioning you can see that uh, tab bar at the bottom when it scrolls over something brighter or of a different color you can see the transition and you can see the design kind of pop through it with that liquid glass you can see it kind of when you're scrolling over text right there but it's most noticeable when you scroll over like this for example at least this heading of course these headings change quite a bit depending on what apple is promoting in the tv app you can kind of see it there it more switches between light and dark it, uh, that's harder to see because of that that kind of washes out the effects but there is no light mode in the tv app so that's not going to make any difference you can see it a little bit there as you scroll up because when you scroll down the tab bar collapses you can see it a little bit through that little button that right there that's the current tab you're on but you can't see it very much especially the search button it's off to the right if you're in a menu like this there's no color over there so those are a few examples of the new liquid glass here in ios 26 beta 4 i definitely think it's better than beta 3 but let me know what you guys think in the comments i do wish apple will keep improving this which i know they will as there's still several betas left in the ios 26 development cycle another small new change in ios 26 beta 4 is an updated icon for the camera app the uh, lens reflection is definitely brighter so i think i like this one better it pops more just a small change but it helps visualize it a bit more you can come to your own conclusion there there was also some people noticed a change with the mail app icon where the like bottom part of the envelope looks different i even thought they might have been a change with the clock app or even the calculator app with their icons i may be wrong maybe this was changed in an earlier beta and i just didn't notice it until now you can see i especially noticed like towards the top like the top part of that calculator above the buttons in this icon it looks a bit more like a gradient instead of a solid gray the clock app i feel like there was more of a border around it i feel like i could see the little ticks with the times like the lines or each like five minutes or the, the gray lines in between them uh, showcasing each minute i feel like i could see that more clearly again i may be wrong maybe that was changed in an earlier beta but i did notice it was different compared to when i first installed ios 26 on beta 1 you guys can let me know if, in the comments whether that's correct or not i'll throw up a dark tint on the background to see if that makes any difference so again we're looking at the mail app the camera app those are definitely changed and possibly even calculator or clock and then i'll go ahead and change it also to dark icons i did not see a change with clear icons or tinted icons for that matter all right you can see there there's not as much change to the calculator or even the clock app this time you can still see that change with the camera app it does look brighter and again with the mail app that does look brighter as well so there's definitely a change there in dark mode one more change that look 
quickly the last I found was in the messages app. When you're in a conversation and you can see especially the bottom bar, the iMessage bar, or even like the plus button, and you see there's more of that liquid glass, especially if you have a background on. If you have a blank background, like a white or dark background, it seems like in beta 3, it was always dark. Um, now it should be light, and I can showcase that as well. You can see if you have a background on, because I'll actually put up a side-by-side, -side, I'll throw up what it looks like in beta 3 on the left side of the screen, but you can see it was just more of a solid color. Now you can see it seems to reflect more as to what that's showing, especially since a lot of these backgrounds are gradients. Let me pull up a dynamic background for you. All right, try to reload it. Here's that same background. Now it's more dynamic. Now you can definitely see it there. That background is very pink on that. And then there's the plus button. You can see that liquid glass taking place. Like I said, in beta three, it was just more dark gray across the board or maybe light gray, depending on the background you had. You can, you can see the back button, the FaceTime button. They seem to have a black outline and then now it's white. So it depends on where the background is based on its dynamic movements and then you can see down here you can definitely see that liquid glass here let's go ahead and change this to no background and you can see yep it's white change this to dark mode it's going to be dark as well the bottom like iMessage bar and again the plus button like the FaceTime button the back button up here the same thing and then I'll change it back to light mode so I can let you see the entire screen there you go again with the FaceTime the back button you can't see as much there and if you have an Apple Intelligence enabled device and you use the notification Notification summaries. AI notification summaries for news apps are finally back. Earlier this year, Apple was forced to pause this, at least for news apps, after there were several incorrect or false headlines. After complaints by the BBC, Apple was actually forced to pause AI notification summaries for news apps. When you set up notification summaries, when you turn on notification summaries for news apps, that it is possible that summarization may change the meaning of the original headlines and it advises users to verify information so never trust the ai generated headlines you know from first glance who wants to double check it we're not exactly sure if it's fixed we'll have to see it in person there may be more false headlines and we'll just have to see what comes of it because if more fake headlines come out it could even cause a lawsuit in the future which could be pretty interesting especially for apple there's also a new splash screen when you first open the camera app when you updates to iOS 26 beta 4. So this will also show up if you update to any iOS 26 beta for the first time, including the final release in the fall. But it says new camera design. It says a streamlined design elevates photo and video modes. Simply swipe left or right to access additional modes. Tap the control button on the top to access settings. And then you can just press continue and that's all that is. Basically just shows you how to navigate the new photo app because it is different than before like you know just swiping on the screen instead of tapping the buttons at the bottom to switch between modes and then of course all your options are now at the top and then it opens the menu where you can change stuff this isn't new in beta 4 this has been here ever since beta 1 but the splash screen showing you how to use it is new there is an updated menu for touch id and passcode settings in the settings app so you go to settings and then touch id and passcode or face id and passcode depending on the device you're using i can actually throw up on on the screen what it looks like on iOS 18. There's now a lock glyph instead of saying enter passcode at the top. It just says enter your passcode down here in the center and it is bolded now and it does have this description which should be the same as before. All the text is also left aligned now. We're seeing that universally across iOS 26 as most if not all text in these menus like this with these little descriptions and a title. Most of them have left aligned text. That's an overarching theme in iOS 26. Of course with the redesign. There are no changes after you enter your passcode. Every option here is the same as it was before. There's also new customization settings. If you go to the phone settings regarding call screening, it's much easier to understand. So you go to phone settings and you go to screen unknown callers. Before it was just a little toggle to screen unknown callers. Now you have three different options. You have never, it says calls from unsaved numbers will ring and missed calls will be displayed on the recents list. So that's without any screening at all. Every call you go 
it will ring as long as you have notifications and calls on. The second option, in, which is the default now, is ask a reason for calling. This is like your traditional like call screening that was showed off at WWDC. It says calls from unsaved numbers will be asked for more information like uh, their name and why they're contacting you before your iPhone rings. Calls and data rates may apply with that option. And then the third option is silence. So this will actually completely silence calls from unsaved numbers. We've had this option for years. And of course the screening option is like a middle ground. It won't completely silence unknown callers, but it will silence them at first asking for more information. That way you're not disturbed by someone who might be spam calling. Anyway, silence says calls from unsaved numbers will be silenced since you voicemail and displayed on the recents list. Calling in data rates may apply even with that option. So I think this is much easier to understand than before because of course we've had this silence option for years, but it kind of overrides when you turn on call screenings. That makes a lot more sense now. Now you just choose one of these three options. Mac Rumors has found an interesting leak when it comes to one of Apple's upcoming products. Some are calling it the HomePad. Some are calling it the HomePod Touch or like a HomePod with a screen that can display things. There's a line in a setting that says the following, your HomePod won't be able to show you the local weather time or respond to Siri requests about your area. And the keyword there is show because right now none of Apple's HomePods have a display and they can't show anything. So this shows us that in the coming months or so they might release a new HomePod that can show you information like this. This is interesting and it definitely leaks towards that being a possibility. A lot of people were saying that this was supposed to come out this year, but then it was delayed to early 2026. So there's still some time before we may see it, but it looks like Apple is at least preparing to release it or at least start developing it and its unique software that it will have. While we're in settings, another updated setting was in sounds and haptics. You scroll down past your alerts and all your notification sounds. You go past built-in speaker. Now, now there's a new app option. They removed the night mode option, which is kind of what this was before. It's almost essentially the same thing. It's just, I think it's just worded differently. It has the same objective. Now it actually has a description under it so that you know what this option does without having to Google it. It says reduce loud sounds. This replaces the night mode we had before. It's off by default and it says under it with the description reduces audio volume range and creates softer sound effects while maintaining the quiet details of the original audio. That's what Reduce Loud Sounds does. It's definitely more clear in its description and its wording than it was with Night Mode, which didn't even have any descriptions. So you really wouldn't know what it did unless you turn it on. All right, why don't you would expect iOS 26 Beta 5? So of course, Beta 4 released just this Tuesday, the 22nd of July. It seems like we're still on a two-week schedule. I can't rule out next week, the week of August 28th, but I think it's definitely more likely that we'll see it the week after that. That first week of August, the week of the 4th, we'll likely see developer beta 5 on Monday, August 4th. If it's just like this week, it doesn't release on Monday, but Tuesday rather, maybe we will see it on Tuesday the 5th or even Wednesday the 6th. I think earlier in the week is more likely. As far as the public beta, the public beta actually just released as I'm recording this. It just released about two hours ago today as I'm recording this. Thursday, July 24th, public beta is out for you guys to try it. As far as public beta 2, we should expect it a day or two after the developer beta 5, between the August 5th or August 7th, sometime in between those days, we should be seeing that. Alright, that pretty much does it for today's beta release video. I didn't pull off the release notes this time, but I will link them in the description, just because they were kind of confusing to me, so that's why I just avoided it. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Is the liquid glass design better or worse, or should it be tweaked a little more? Anyways, I'll be continuing to make more videos as each developer beta releases as well as some additional videos i have planned for the next few months thank you guys for watching and i'll see you all later